Hi everybody, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology and these are your horoscopes for July of 2019. So this is the sun and rising sign horoscope for uh, all of you Leos out there. Now, um, it is a huge month because we've got two eclipses coming through this month. Um, I'm going to walk you through them, give you a sense of what to expect. You may notice I'm not in my office right now. Um, I'm at my mother's place in Michigan with my uh, wife and kids for the fourth. Uh, so I'll be back to my office uh, next week. And this week I'll be uh, doing a few posts from, uh, from, my, from my guest bedroom here, uh, talking about at least the first eclipse for sure this week. Um, all right, let me show you on the screen what we've got going on. So for Leo um, this month, the eclipses are happening. Maybe Leos may have some of the most difficult placements for the eclipses this month. The solar eclipse that happens on July 2nd is happening in your 12th house. Traditionally, the 12th house was called Malas Daemon, which meant evil or bad spirit. And the general idea was that it had to do with any kind of influence within yourself or within the world or environment that would try to carry you out of your center or carry you off track. So the new moon in the 12th house, one thing you have to be careful for is a development in your life of unhealthiness, of bad decision making, or of some kind of deviation from the correct path that you're supposed to be on. So just in general, a new moon solar eclipse in the 12th can be like, this is where you should not start drinking. You know, this is where you shouldn't start smoking. This is where you shouldn't get into another toxic relationship that you know is not good. So be careful of anything self-destructive in the months ahead. At the same time, excuse me, at the same time, the 12th house is also a place that has to do with um, anything that is sort of beyond this world. And uh, there's a saying, you know, in Lord of the Rings, all who wander are not lost. And I always love that saying because sometimes there are interludes in our life where we feel like we're really off course. We're in the woods somehow. But we trust deep down inside if we look into our hearts. We know that we'll get, we'll, eventually we'll find our way. And that even though we're seemingly lost, there is a purpose and a reason for our wandering. So there are these meaningful interludes in our life that come in where we feel like we don't fit in, or we feel like we don't have a place, or we don't know where we're going, or we're confused, or we're we're just in a difficult place of feeling like we're out of our center. And it's not necessarily because we're, you know, shooting up like heroin or something. It's because we're, you know, we're, we may just be in a little bit of a, a wandering phase, an interlude or a liminal space. 12th house is called metacosmios, meaning in between worlds. 12th house is also associated with the labor pains of, of, of women before they birth the actual labor. So it could be that this new moon solar eclipse is introducing a kind of liminal space into your life that you're entering into, a transitional space of some kind. And you're going to be there for a little bit, maybe the next six months to a year. It's leading somewhere eventually to a birth, but you may have to do some meaningful wandering and reflecting for a little bit. And you may prefer a little bit of time alone or, you know, just don't be surprised if you're feeling like you don't really feel like you belong anywhere even in the midst of friends or familiar places. Um, that feeling may um, uh, last for a little bit, but it is taking you somewhere, so trust the process. Um, now, when you go forward to July 8th and 9th, um, then we have really interesting uh, Mercury-Mars conjunction in your first house and home sign of Leo, uh, just as Mercury is turning retrograde, and both are moving through a square to Uranus and Taurus. And that's going to be um, in your 10th house. And the 10th house is, of course, your career house. This is really interesting. This Mercury-Mars um, signature has the potential to really um, put us into, especially you as a Leo, put, put all, anyone or all of us into a space where our egos are a little bit more defensive or protective or reactive. The potential to be a little bit more domineering or bullying is there this month and also the potential to take ourselves too seriously or to become theatrical or dramatic. Um, so be really careful of that and of more erratic, sudden kind of um, combative moods or temperamental energies, especially that might somehow express themselves sort of erratically in the, in the workplace that could really kind of get you in trouble. On the other hand, 
sometimes there is a need to defy or resist tradition or authority to speak up, to defend something, to put an idea out there kind of boldly um, could be a good time for that as well. You just need to make sure that it's not something you're doing, you know, in order to create a scene or in order just to be rebellious or something like that. Um, it's also a good time to kind of work on, um, you know, some something bold, progressive, visionary, um, maybe also employing some kind of new technology or new idea. Don't be surprised if the light bulbs are really going off um, during this Mercury retrograde because, you know, Mars, Mercury, very incisive, very intelligent, square to Uranus, very inventive as well. So um, the next phase is going to be June 10th through the 21st. We've got the 12th house, 6th house axis lighting up pretty big time. Between the 10th and the 15th, you've got uh, the sun going through oppositions to um, Saturn and Pluto with Venus. Uh, between the 17th and the 21st, going through oppositions to Saturn and Pluto from the 12th to the 6th. And then right in the middle of that on July 16th, a lunar eclipse in Capricorn um, in the 6th house. So a big 6th house, 12th house uh, standoff. Now, the 12th house has, in this case, may bring up issues around love, relationships, family, friends, more vulnerable, emotional, and relational spaces. Uh, or things related to the past or to family or ancestry. And then on the other hand, the Capricorn energy in the sixth house has a lot to do with um, death, endings, work, exhaustion, fatigue, contraction, you know, obstacles. Um, the, the sixth house traditionally was called the house of bad fortune. And it, it's a place in life that helps us grow because of the obstacles it puts in front of us, whether it's really grueling work even if it's good work, it's just really exhausting. Uh, or if it's some kind of selfless service we have to do um, in order to, you know, we, we feel the pain of others, we, we serve in some way. Or if it's a uh, sickness. Um, but there, these, this is a house of strife and of obstacles. So, you know, this feeling here of dealing with deeper, heavier transitional spaces um, that require us to, you know, face difficult things, especially where we're most vulnerable probably in family, home, relationships, friendships. Maybe in the workplace, we're also having to look at how much we can compromise or sacrifice. Um, we're looking at patterns around how much of our physical energy we put into our work and whether it's exhausting us or not, whether we have enough time for, um, you know, the sweet things in life or if we're, if, we're, if we're draining ourselves too much. So all of those questions can also be up for review. Um, the lunar eclipse in the sixth can also indicate a little bit of a, of a difficult time around health, uh, potentially health of people around you, uh, people in your life, maybe not you necessarily yourself, but you do want to keep, keep, um, be careful about your health this month as well. Uh, now on the 31st, the last transit of the month that I'm tracking, um, let's pull that one up here. So on the 31st, you're going to see, a new moon in Leo in your home sign with Venus conjoined and again, square to Uranus in the 10th house. Something about the moon cycle to come starting at the end of July and stretching all the way through August is going to have to do with this idea of creative and personal independence and some kind of revolutionary um, energy that's also coming through your career house right now. You're, you may feel the need to um, really um, shift the way that you're showing up you know, in the world, a new me, a new project, a new idea, because I'm a new person, I've changed, you know, that's the kind of, I can almost hear someone saying these things. Um, you also have this idea of um, Venus square to Uranus, um, the need for greater experimentation, play, independence, fun um, in relationships. But again, you could easily also abandon or suddenly cut off or divorce or separate or break away from any kind of relationship, whether it's professional or personal, because of feeling like you've been slighted or your ego has been, you know, harmed. So be careful of that ultra egotistical reactivity this month. Your pride could be a little more, uh, you know, touchy, in which case part of the theme of the month may also be about, you know, really looking at your own neediness. You know, um, sometimes, for example, um, we try uh, to, we try to, first of all, we, 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 
we try to overcompensate, we overcompensate, try to get people to like us by doing all sorts of stuff. And then uh, people though can tell that we're doing that. They can tell that we're needy and insecure and that we're trying too hard to be liked. And then they don't like us, right? And then it's like, oh man, and we, don't, we get, get so offended and so bothered because they don't like us. But can't they see I'm trying here? You know, and then we, and then we don't like ourselves because we realize we've tried too hard. It's like a downward spiral. So one thing that's really, maybe really helpful this month is about just, you know, for, for Leo's, Leo Sun, Leo Rising, just getting out of your heads about, potentially about what people are thinking about you and the need to kind of, you know, show up in a way that's just unabashed and unapologetically you. And just some people will like it and some people won't. Um, and not, not worrying too much about what other people think about you, but also being careful, you know, not to be provocative, not kind of, you know, lifting the middle finger to people and saying, yeah, I don't care. You know, it's kind of, um, you know, overall, I would say the theme this month is be careful about, you know, trying to overpower or overwhelm people. Be careful of the strength of your ego and your personality this month. It may in some ways really need to shine. In other ways, it could be just too much. So something to keep, uh, keep track of. All right. So Leo's, that's what I've got for you. Please tell me your stories this month. Tell me how you guys are doing. Uh, tell me, um, what happens with the eclipses. Be curious to hear. Um, and I will be doing some updates on the eclipses this month as well. So stay tuned for those. All right. That's what I've got. Take care. Bye.